All right, here we go, back at it. KIN 587, we're gonna be discussing physical activities for individuals with ASD and just go through some best practices and some different modifications that can be made uh, depending on the specific physical activity that's being offered. So um, it's definitely best to utilize individual or small group games or activities for students with ASD because of the social and interaction factor. The smaller games, they tend to have more success and even individualized physical activities are usually more preferred by students with ASD. Um, but as always, as we've been saying it through all the lectures, right, having a routine is really important. Um, so they know, you know, how the session starts, what the middle of the session kind of looks like, and then what the closure looks like. So that's really important regardless of what the physical activity is. Um, know the student's interests, what their preferred equipment is, maybe uh, different colors, different tactile, um, whether they like soft, hard, heavy, light, just to try to increase engagement in those individual or small group games and activities. Also, any way that you can um, increase their participation and help them kind of plan through the sequence. So providing like a visual schedule or letting them know up front what your expectations are or what's going to be covered through that session would be very beneficial. And then also uh, utilizing stations. Stations is uh, really successful for students with ASD. And the nice thing about stations is you can provide visuals or you can pro provide additional instructions and you can also utilize a timer so they know exactly how long they're gonna be working at that station. So it helps them with transitions, it helps them with understanding through the visuals, and it also kind of gives them a little bit of a concrete location uh, to perform those skills as well. So getting into visuals, right? Making sure that when we perform a warm up, we're using visuals to help support instruction. So there's the exercise deck here, which is super awesome. That can be used for doing warm ups. There's cubes or dice that can be used. Um, so not really knowing what's kind of coming or what the exercise is going to be. That anticipation sometimes can increase participation and also just providing a visual card. So you might have heard of PEX, Picture Exchange Communication System. Um, so being able to utilize different picture cards can also provide students with maybe a choice on what they would like to do for their warm up or their workout for physical activity. Getting back to activity station signs, again, these are super beneficial. Uh, you can use either a manila folder that you cut a hole out of and you make your own, or you can buy these fancy ones that I have on the slide here. Um, but the nice thing about them is you can interchange the pieces of paper. So depending on what physical activity topic you're working on, you can set up those stations and have a visual cue and then also an instructional cue for the students to be able to follow. So in this one, I have a shooting station. So practice your shooting skills, see how many you can make. Remember your cues, beef, balance, eyes, elbow, follow through. And then another one at bucket ball, hit the ball into the bucket with the paddle. Um, if you make a shot, try scoring at another bucket. Remember your cues. So maybe on the back side of that one, you could list those cues. So if they forget them, then they have a reference to go back to. So again, stations are very beneficial and then also having station signs as an opportunity for students to go ahead and utilize that to uh, give them additional visuals and ad additional instructions can also be beneficial in where we're increasing the success of that student with ASD um, throughout the physical activities. So what are some motivational tasks? One, um, music for some students is very beneficial. For other students, it's not preferred. So it's important when you utilize music that you watch the students' reactions to get a feel for the volume and maybe the type of music that may work best for your students with ASD. Also, when utilizing task cards, right? Start with one task card that gives a choice of an activity 
and then add another choice card. So you don't want to start them off with like four or five if they're not used to making a choice. So start them off with one card that has two choices. And remember, when you provide a visual and a choice, it should always be a choice that you're okay with as the instructor or teacher or coach or whatever. So don't put on something that you don't want them to choose. The fact is, is giving them choices, either of those choices are appropriate and are okay for what you have planned. And then add on to those uh, task cards and choices as they learn and develop additional skills. When doing locomotor skills, right, getting from point A to point B, um, use various skills, right? Um, practice more than just walking, running, practice skipping, marching, basketball sliding, even animal walks, um, different varying positions, postures, um, weight transfer is really beneficial. Um, even log rolling, right? So don't ha think kind of within the box when it comes to locomotor skills, kind of think outside. There's many different ways that we can increase motivation of students uh, through having variation. And it's also important when doing either stations or repetitive movements that we provide students with a way to track themselves. And for students with ASD, it's usually beneficial if we give them something tactile to use for their tracking. So it could be clothespins, it could be popsicle sticks, it could be just cards every time they complete the task correctly or complete a lap they get a uh, card or even there's these tactile counting sticks where you know they might get a stick and hold on to it and it has a tactile dot for one and after they complete they turn that back in and receive a number two one and so they can feel kind of the bumps on the sticks to help them count and know how many uh, that they've completed. So another way to just acknowledge and give them feedback that you see them performing and you're accrediting how many they've completed successfully. Equipment choices is a huge one, right? So uh, providing various amounts of equipment to choose from, thinking outside the box when it comes to um, standard equipment utilized for specific sports or specific skills, right? So pulling out many different pieces of equipment and letting them choose, right? And explore with that piece of equipment and see if it's a preferred or see, you know, if it's helping them perform the task or activity or um, maybe inhibiting them. So kind of guiding them into a better selection. So there's slow-mo, uh, balls, which are easy to catch and bounce and grab. Uh, they are kind of bumpy balls, lightweight. You could use koosh balls, right? So that's in this bottom picture here uh, with the strands coming out of it. They don't really roll that quickly. So they're really good for doing any tossing and catching, even kicking, right? When we're practicing a soccer dribble, we don't want a ball that's going to, the minute we tap it, roll away 10 feet. So using something that's smaller and makes them really focus on kicking and then also doesn't roll very quickly can increase the practice trials for students with ASD to be able to be more successful. Multi-sensory balls are really beneficial if they provide visual or auditory uh, feedback. They might have bells inside of it. They might light up when they move. They might vibrate. Um, and you can also vary the amount of inflation in balls as well. So keeping balls kind of half inflated can provide an additional kind of tactile sensation and whether or not they bounce or not. Uh, grip balls are great. I love them. I probably use them as my top ball um, for doing any different activity. And that's the blue one down here. People call them grab balls, grip balls. Um, they're open inside so that increases the opportunities to um, catch and to grasp at the ball. It can be used for kicking, throwing. Some of them actually bounce. You can tie ribbons to them to make them more visualized stimula, uh, visual stimulant. You can blow a balloon up inside of it. You can uh, stuff it with grocery bags of different colors and give some crinkle. I mean, it's limitless how you can use those balls to really be able to match the needs and motivation of a student. And again, just provide choice. 
figure out what their preference is, provide variety of different balls when using equipment, soft, hard, heavy, light, uh, different colors, and whether or not they make noise, they light up, just have variation and provide choice that can easily make a difference when doing physical activities. Okay, let's talk about some preferred activities, you know, thinking about that pre-MAC principle, right? So having them perform the sports skill or physical activity you want and then end with a preferred activity. So if they complete this, then they get to do a preferred activity. Um, some preferences are balance activities. So walking barefoot or with socks, doing river rocks that kind of are these um, plastic domes of different heights or using balance beams, even walking across bubble wrap or uh, balance domes can be beneficial. Scooters, roller racers, or even roller skates, anything kind of a high interest wheel item. Um, and even it can be worked as cooperative. If you have this co-op band, which is kind of like a stretchy band that has fabric over it. So they can be uh, pulled and then they can be the person pulling even just kind of pushing someone if they're okay tactilely being touched um, on the shoulders while on a scooter and then switch roles. That can be a very kind of uh, preferred activity choice. And then really anything that can provide some vestibular input. So it could be spinning or swinging, maybe jumping. So they might use a scooter board, which kind of looks like this duck walker, which is the bottom picture where they're on it. They can spin on it in circles, um, hanging a suspended swing and letting them have some swing time. That's beneficial. Uh, utilizing a trampoline or a pogo stick if they like really jumping or that hard impact. Um, even stomp rockets, which you can get like this air pad that they stomp on and then shoot a rocket up in the air and they might have to catch it. Um, but saving those preferred activities for after they complete whatever that physical activity that you want is. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears a little bit and talk more about specific um, adaptations or modifications that can be made when introducing physical activities related to sports and sports skills. And many of these accommodations you can use in all the sports and even in any physical activities. I'm just gonna kind of break it up through different sports skills and just provide some information, but just be knowing that you can, you know, tweak these adaptations and modifications and really provide them in a wide array of physical activities. So looking at baseball or softball, definitely offer different sizes of the ball, um, different sizes of the bat, whether it be a thicker plastic bat, even a shorter bat, um, utilizing a T and then from a T hitting off of that using a suspended ball. So hanging it from a tree or hanging it from a basketball net and having them hit it stationary and then moving to actually swinging that ball towards them. So there's some movement and then going into a tossed ball, changing the distance of the bases, whether they need to be further away or closer, having a peer coach help them run the bases or having a peer coach or a buddy out in the field to help them with fielding, catching and throwing, creating a diagram of the field so they know where first base, second base, third base is, even providing arrows um, to know where they run to throughout once they get to each of those different bases could be beneficial with just having a cone and an arrow pointing so they know where to go next. All right, let's shift gears into basketball, right? Again, offering different kinds of uh, basketballs. Could be soft, could be hard, um, could be just a nubby ball, a tactile ball that can bounce. Doesn't necessarily have to be a basketball. Changing the height of the basket. If they're not able to do that, um, maybe hanging hula hoops down from the basketball net to increase success. Starting only with a 1v1 or a 2v1. So giving them opportunity to practice those concepts of offense and defense, right? And just utilizing that in a very, very small game setting, one-on-one or two-on-two. -on -two. Uh, providing visual poly spots throughout to assist movements. So that can be within drills or even within 
um, a game on how to get open. What does that mean? And so maybe having different poly spots for them to move to um, can give them some concrete location on what that means. And remember, with any sport, practicing skills stationary in more of a closed setting and then going to a dynamic movement oriented or open setting where there's different variances that they can't control is always going to be beneficial start stationary start with a controlled environment and then move to a moving skill where the environment isn't uh, necessarily in the control of that student right adding defense in all right let's look at uh, flag football right again offering different kinds and sizes of footballs um probably more on the softer side because um, a standard football is pretty hard when it's getting thrown at you. Um, add additional flags to a player, right? If you only have two, add four on. And so they have greater success of running or um, participating if they have more flags that need to be pulled off. And then for those athletes, they're super fast and no one can catch. Well, then they only get one flag, right? And so you kind of have a system to set up to make it fair. Shorten the distance between end zones so there's not as much running that's needed. Um, split up groups into those that want to play a little bit more competitive compared to those that want to play at a slower speed, more recreational. And even provide visual cards for their plays. So if you have the quarterback, maybe you have a visual showing, okay, this is the route that you're going to run and kind of practicing that with a visual card so they know where they should run to try to get the pass thrown to them, right? Moving on to hockey. So hockey, it may be important to understand which direction to go when they get the height, the puck, is to color code equipment for teams. So everybody has a red hockey stick is on one team and you could also have them wear like a red penny, so that will help them know who to pass to, who's on their team. And even adding um, that red color to the goal that they're shooting on, so that once they get the puck, they don't go in the wrong direction. They're looking for the same color they are to shoot against. Um, setting up play within zones and making them stay within zones can be beneficial, uh, so they you know aren't running through the whole activity right they're going to kind of have to stay within one quadrant of it and that also increases the opportunities of other players to participate using foam hockey sticks for sure is really beneficial uh, using multiple pucks throughout an activity right you can take a pool noodle and slice it into chunks um, if you want to add some fancy you know black electrical tape or duct tape around it you can to make it heavier so it slows down even more, but having more than one puck uh, for activities can be beneficial. And then also using cones to assist with movements or routes or boundaries can provide more of that concrete information uh, that sometimes our students with ASD get confused on when participating in sports skills. And our last sports skill we're gonna cover is soccer. So again, uh, providing different sizes or types of balls um, always when doing soccer, I deflate the soccer balls to about 50%. Uh, one, it doesn't hurt as much if anybody gets hit with the ball. Two, it slows down the ball for increasing success in dribbling. The second one, again, be outside as much as possible. Be on the grass. That's going to increase success when dribbling um, a soccer ball as well. Have all top players within an activity have to touch the soccer ball before they can shoot or score. Again, start with a 1v1 situation. You can easily set up two cones and put a jump rope uh, between the two cones, and that can be your soccer goal to make really small-sided games to increase success and participation. And also just having a kick-for-distance contest, right, to see who can kick the soccer ball the farthest can be beneficial because when we kick the ball as hard as possible, that's when we actually perform that task uh, more appropriately in a mature uh, skill sequence. All right, hopefully you learned some more kind of physical activities for individuals with autism and also some adaptations and modifications that can increase their success 
in participating and improving their physical activity skills. Thanks.